Let's do a couple of problems involving substitution and also involving definite integrals. And we'll see there's a couple of techniques that we can use to work such problems. So let's suppose we're asked to integrate from 1 fourth to 1 half 4 times quantity 3 plus 4x squared dx. And this is definitely a problem where the algebra method would cause us a lot more trouble than it's worth. Uh, because if we're using substitution, this is a pretty straightforward problem. And we saw this before without the definite integral, but let's walk through it again one more time. So we're going to identify here a u. We'll let u equal 3 plus 4x, so that my du would be 0 plus 4 dx. So here's my 4 dx. And now let's rewrite the problem. When rewriting this problem, I highly, highly recommend, in fact, you, you should definitely do this just for it to be correct, in fact, uh, when you rewrite the problem, the bounds of integration are x values. And since we're getting rid of the dx, we need to be very careful and say that this is x is equal to 1 fourth up to x is equal to 1 half. And then we can replace the 4 dx with du, and then the 3 plus 4x with a u, which is all squared. Now, we can do this very simply. We can just integrate to get uh, u squared becomes 1 third u cubed. And we keep the bounds of integration. x is equal to 1 fourth to x is equal to 1 half. Now, we, these are x values. We, can't not, we cannot plug these in for u. So we'll have to substitute back. We'll substitute back the u is equal to 3 plus 4x. And now I can drop the x equals because we know those are x values. It's the only variable involved. And then I can finally plug in top minus the bottom, 1 third. 3 plus 4 times 1 half. All cubed. Minus 1 third. 3 plus 4 times 1 fourth. All cubed. And then it's just a little bit of algebra. Uh, 3 plus 4 times 1 half, that would be 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 thirds is 125 thirds. And we'll do the arithmetic over here. 3 plus 4 times 1 fourth is 1. So 4 cubed would be uh, 16 would be 64 divided by 3. And then finally we'll subtract. I'm seeing 61 thirds. And that does not simplify. So 61 thirds is my final answer. Um, I believe this is doing it uh, the hard way, though. It definitely works. Let me suggest an alternate way that we may, and just depending on the problem, we may choose to do it one way or the other. And so the alternate method for handling this problem would be to go way back to this point right here. And so what I could do at this point is instead of rewrite it like so, it's almost the same thing. In fact, we'll still get the u squared du. However, I'm going to avoid the x equals 1 half and x equals 1 fourth. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to replace those with their corresponding u values. So if x is equal to 1 half, I'll do the top first then what would my u value be? Well, u is equal to 3 plus 4 times x. And my x is 1 half here. So that means I get 3 plus 2 is 5. So I'll write a 5 on the top here for my u value. You could even write u equals 5 if you wish. Uh, but you don't have to. In context, it's uh, obvious that it's the u because that's the variable of differentiation given by the du. 
and then my x is equal to 1 fourth, that'll be converted similarly. 3 plus 4 times 1 fourth, that's 3 plus 1 is 4. So I'll put a 4 on the bottom. And then I can just take the integral, u squared becomes 1 third u cubed. But now, since I've already converted my bounds of integration to u values, 4 and 5, I can go ahead and use the fundamental theorem of calculus to plug in 1 third 5 cubed minus 1 third 4 cubed. And that's the same answer as we got a moment ago, 125 thirds minus 64 thirds and that is 61 thirds. So it's the same answer as before, uh, but notice that we got it in a little bit less work. There were fewer lines involved. Uh, I think I tend to prefer this second method that I showed you, uh, just converting it into the u values uh, in general. Let's take a look at a couple more problems. Let's take the integral from 0 to 1 of z times square root 1 minus z dc. So uh, when doing this problem, like any substitution problem, we need to start by identifying the most complicated aspect. And I think it's, well, it's definitely the square root. So what we want to do is we want to simplify it by making the inside of the square root easier. Let's let u equal 1 minus z. So that would make my du be 0 minus 1, or just negative 1. And we'll write the dz over here. I don't have a negative 1 dz, but that's OK. I could just multiply the other side by negative 1, negative 1 du. Or, in fact, I can just simply say negative du for short is equal to my dz. Now, notice that in this particular problem, um, I have not replaced everything. I've got replacements for my dz. I've got my replacement for 1 minus z. However, the z by itself is going to be a problem. I haven't dealt with that. Uh, it doesn't show up here in my negative du equals dz. But fortunately for this problem, I notice that, hey, I've got that 1 minus z equals u. You can actually solve for z. To get z is, that would be 1 minus u. So actually, that would result in the following. Integrate. Uh, the z gets replaced with 1 minus u. Square root, the 1 minus z gets replaced with a u, and then the dz gets replaced with a negative du. Okay, oh, what else am I missing here? Oh, I need to not forget uh, my bounds of integration. I have a 0 and a 1. So again, those are x bounds. x equals 0. That would convert to, uh, let's see, my u. Oh, my apologies, those are not x values, are they? They are z values. Z values is given by the original problem. So let's fix that. It's not x equals 0 that's being changed. Instead, z equals 0 becomes, the formula is u equals 1 minus z is 0. So that's u is equal to 1. And we have to make sure we put that at the correct place since the zero is on the bottom. The one will be on top. Finally, if z is equal to one, then u is equal to one minus one, which is zero. And it's not a problem that you have the bigger number on bottom. Uh, that's perfectly fine. It's possible to have that happen. Uh, but notice that uh, we can use another property 
of integrals that we learned in our Calculus 1 class, we can take the integral, the bound of integration, and flip them. All right? There's nothing wrong with that. If I flip them, then I would have a 0 on the bottom and a 1 on the top. And then all I would have to do is introduce a negative. So I'll stick a negative out front here. Okay, and then I'll have 1 minus u square root u negative du. Lots of negatives going on here. Let's uh, clean this up just a little bit. Uh, and I noticed that, oh, hey, I've got a negative here. I can cancel that with a negative here. And what else can I do to simplify? Well, that, that square root of u can be distributed. And I'll write things with a power. So I'm getting 0 to 1. 1 times square root of u is square root of u, or u to the 1 half, minus u times square root of u would be u to the 3 halves du. All right, now I'll integrate. I've got u to the 1 half. That's going to become, add 1 to the power, u to the 3 halves. And then I got to multiply by, well, I'll divide by the new power, or that's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, two thirds, and then do it again. U gets raised to a higher power, five halves, add one to three halves to get five halves. Multiply that by its in, so inverse, multiplicative inverse. And then I'll plug in zero to one. All right, so what does that yield us? Well, I'll plug in the top and Thank goodness we got easy numbers to plug in. Two thirds times one to the three halves minus two fifths times one to the five halves. But of course, one to the three halves, one to the five halves, those are just one, so they go away. That's the top. Minus, plug in the bottom. Well, I've got zeros, 0 minus 0, so all that is also going to go away. So my result is simply 2 thirds minus 2 fifths, and I can get a common denominator, that's going to be over 15, so that'd be 10 fifteenths minus 6 fifteenths, the final answer is 4 fifteenths. Let's do one more example. Let's compute the definite integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tangent squared theta times secant squared of theta d theta. Now, um, let, me, let me write the tangent a little bit cleaner for you here. As written, the problem looks a little tricky. It's kind of hard to tell. What is uh, my complicated thing uh, it's inside of another function. And so maybe uh, it would help if I actually rewrote this just slightly. Uh, and, and the other trick I would point out is, do you see any derivatives of functions? So do you see one function in the integral and its derivative also in that integral? And the thing that pops out to me when I look at this problem is I see tangent. Here's my tangent right here of theta, and I also see its derivative, secant squared of theta. So I'll rewrite the problem a little bit. This is a little more work than is probably necessary, but I'll go ahead and do it and write this as tangent of theta all squared times 
help make this very clear what the trick is. Because now, what can I do? Well, I've got the tangent theta all squared. I can let u equal tangent of theta so that my du is secant squared of theta, d theta. And that's nice because here's my secant squared of theta d theta. Here is my tangent of theta. So I'll rewrite integral. Uh, it looks like I've got u squared and the secant squared theta d theta all becomes du. Let's see, uh, we got one more issue. We haven't done dealt with our bounds of integration. So I've got theta values. Theta equals zero to theta equals pi over four. Let's make those conversions. Theta equals pi over four is on top, so I guess I'll do that first. And that will become uh, u is equal to the tangent of theta. So the tangent of pi over four is just one. Likewise, theta is equal to zero. The tangent of zero is just zero. So I've got very nice bounds of integration, zero to one. This will probably be the easiest integral I do all day. One third u cubed evaluated from zero to one. Plug in the top, we get one third times one cubed is just one third. Minus plug in the bottom, one third times zero is zero. And that's simply one third. And that's my final answer for that problem.